The Little Theatre here in Leicester is part of the Little Theatre Guild of Great Britain and um, we've been in existence here in Leicester for about 90 years now. It's been going a long time and during all that time obviously things have really changed an awful lot. began um, about 50 years ago and just ordinary folks coming along to the South Wixton High School to rehearse for a show and we rehearsed on a Wednesday evening which we do now and um, we used to have a great deal of fun. We just put on the one show a year and that was within a school, one of the local schools. The hut came about because we needed to make our own scenery really and we weren't able to do that at the schools. Um, the council gave us the opportunity to um, lease the land for this building here and um, this is where all the scenery was made and all the costumes were stored which saved us an awful lot of money. They changed the policy somewhat and we weren't able to um, use the woodworking facilities to make our scenery. So the opportunity came for us to move to the Little Theatre and it was a big thing in those days but we decided that we would take this opportunity and move and we haven't looked back since really. The Little Theatre here in Leicester is part of the Little Theatre Guild of Great Britain and um, we've been in existence here in Leicester for about 90 years now. It's been going a long time, and during all that time, obviously things have really changed an awful lot. It's run um, by a board of trustees um, who give up their time freely um, because they have a passion in the theatre, and then everything is stacked down below them. We have lots of people involved in lots of areas. Um, to keep our 12 plays that we produce a year and the Christmas Panto going. Um, then into the mix, we take in what we call Let Societies. They're the musical societies, of which we have about five now, who come in and do their show. They use our premises and our facilities and um, put their show on for a week. Probably about 10 years ago, I came here to the Little Theatre to see my friend perform in A Slice of Saturday Night and I fell in love with the show and I always hoped that I would do it at some point. In different parts I've played mainly are here at the Little Theatre. Oscar in Sweet Charity, Bobby Child in Crazy For You, Wild Bill Hickok in Calamity Jane. I played Tony and the Boyfriend. <laughs> Perhaps my most favourite part was a couple of years ago I was given the opportunity to play the man in Andrew Lloyd Webber's Whistle Down the Wind. I wear more than one hat here at the Little Theatre in Leicester. I'm the costume designer and head of wardrobe. This means that I'm responsible for looking after the 12 productions that we do a year um, in the form of plays plus a Christmas show, which is normally a massive panto. So I have to create, collate, find the costumes for all of these productions. Here at the Drama Society, I've mainly done pantos. Um, I'm a bit of a pantoholic. I, I absolutely love them. There's a couple of costumes here that I've pulled out that are particular favourites of mine. 
Uh, they were made for Panto here at the Little Theatre in Leicester. Um, Cinderella, they were made for a guy called Kieran Whelan who played Prince Charming in the Panto. Uh, there is a lot of work in these costumes. Um, lots of braid, lots of embroidery. And not only have we got the coat, but we've got the waistcoat underneath and then we've got the knee breeches. So there's hours of work that have gone into these, but they look fantastic on the stage. They light beautifully and they're well worth all the time that's spent on them. So the fact that I can mix my creative skills as a costume designer along with directing and writing the pantos is just amazing for me. Well, here we are in the main auditorium at the Little Theatre in Leicester, and as we speak, the guys are on stage putting the finishing touches to the set for our next production, which is uh, a World War classic, R.C. Sheriff's Journey's End. I think um, amateur dramatics has changed quite a lot in the fact that when I was first involved with amateur dramatics, it was always at church halls, um, it was always um, you make your own costumes, and it didn't matter how talented you were, um, how good you were at any particular thing, everyone could be involved in something. And you were catering for the local community, and they, not that they didn't care that at the standard of the production, but it was more accepted that it was amateur and that's what you were going to see. The amateur, well, amateur musicals and dramatics have um, changed immensely over the years. Um, it's become much more of a professional um, hobby. The standards that are set are a lot higher than they used to be. The thing that has really changed is the fact that a lot of people can't really commit to the time that it takes to be involved and put on a show. People's work commitments are very different. We don't have a lot of nine to five jobs nowadays. So we find that quite a problem with people. Now I think the gap's widened between professional and amateur theatre. People don't want to go and see a, a church hall show anymore. I think they expect to see something of a professional standard. Um, um, which is hard for people. I think amateur dramatics has changed a lot over the last few years. It's become far more professional because people see television shows and they just expect a lot more from the amateurs, um, which makes it hard work, I suppose, for the societies, but it's very rewarding in the end. I just enjoy the musicals so much. Um, they are a big um, asset to community I think um, and I just enjoy it immensely it's a fantastic hobby to have. I think it's quite difficult to explain to people who don't have that feel feeling of belonging to an amateur society of the buzz and the excitement that you get out of it and I, I don't think that's changed at all for people.